So, hey guys, welcome back. Uh, I'll be showing you how to make this blinker circuit using a 555 timer chip. So here's my chip, the 555 timer, and this layout right here makes it an A-stable mode. So it's called an A-stable multivibrator, and essentially what that means is it takes one state on the input, which is 5 volts, and it makes it two states on the output. So we have high, low, high, low, oscillating back and forth, just like an LED you saw. And then what controls it is these two resistors and this capacitor right here. So the pinout for the 555 timer is pin 1 is ground, pin 2 is the trigger, pin 3 is output, pin 4 is the reset, pin 5 is control voltage, pin 6 is threshold, pin 7 is discharge, and then pin 8 is VCC. And this IC I'm using can take a maximum of 16 volts, but a minimum of 4.5 volts. Alright, so essentially this right here is how I set up my circuit. So we have to power the chip, so I just have 5 volts coming into pin 8, VCC, and then we have ground connected to pin 1. And then, we have, then I have a 1K resistor coming from VCC to pin 7 on the chip, and I have an 100K resistor here, which is between pin 7 and pin 6 on the IC. Then I have a jumper here, which is between pin 6 and pin 2, then 5 is no connect. 5 and 4 are no connect, so pin 4, nothing connected either. And I'll explain why in a second. Then pin 3 is our output, and I just have that connected to an LED with our current limiting resistor here. And I'm just using a 3.3K, but depending on how much voltage you have coming in, you might need to change that. Then we have our capacitor here. I'm using a 1 microfarad, 25 volt electrolytic capacitor. That's on pin 2, going to ground. So I can real quickly demonstrate um, how changing some of the values can adjust the speed. So I'm going to take this capacitor out. I'm going to replace it with a 1 microfarad capacitor. Let me see how that makes it blink faster. And so forth with changing the resistors too. Well, let me put the 10, 10 microfarad capacitor back. So I, I have this set up so that it blinks at a relatively slow speed. But what if you wanted to change it, change how fast it goes with a variable resistor right here? And we can actually do that by replacing this 100K resistor right here. But before we do that, I'm going, before we do that, my bad, um, I'm actually going to talk about why we do not have anything connected to pin 4 here. So pin 4 is the reset pin, and by tying it low, what you're essentially doing is shutting the chip down. By tying it high, um, nothing happens. It keeps it running. So we're not using the reset pin, and by connecting it to nothing, or just letting it float, it could pick up signals from the air and like accidentally shut down or do random things and we don't want. So we're just gonna, we did tie this to VCC. Uh, the data sheet actually, actually recommends we do this anyway. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. There we go. So now we shouldn't have any misfires or anything. All right, now let's connect up our Potentiometer. So I'm using a 10K potentiometer right here. I'm just going to connect that in. Then we need a jumper wire from one of the potentiometer leads. I'll go ahead and take this resistor out. pin 6 and then I'm going to connect a 10k resistor to the middle pin of the potentiometer 
And now, we can, with a screwdriver, adjust the speed by changing the resistance. So you make it go blink faster. That's about as fast as it goes. And we can make it blink slower, just like this. That's pretty cool. Now you're probably wondering why do I have another 10K resistor? Well, essentially what I needed was a 20K potentiometer to make it the, the speed that I wanted, make it look nice. But I didn't have that, I only had a 10K, so I'm just putting another 10K in series with it, which basically equals a 20K. Now this is cool, but I actually want to take a closer look at this in the uh, in the oscilloscope. So I'm actually going to connect this up. Ground pin. And we're going to take a closer look at the signal. Alright, so we can go ahead and turn the input on. And we can see we get a mm, square wave coming in on the oscilloscope. But what you might have noticed is there's some random random junk here on the rising edge. So what we can actually do is we can pause the screen and we can zoom in. So if we take a closer look, we can see that's that's a lot of stuff. And we can zoom in really, really far and we can see all it is is like spikes and ripples. And what that is, is that's noise. So you can go ahead and zoom out real quick. Need to run. All right, but there's actually a way we can fix this. The data sheet actually recommends that we put a small disk capacitor between the pin five on the IC and ground. So I'm gonna do that. And right there, there is a significant change, all the stuff. And now most of that stuff, uh, that spiking and noise is all gone now. But if we pause the, the screen again, zoom in, you can see there's still a little bit left. And there's actually not much we can do about that. But the problem might be the power supply that you have coming into your breadboard. So to prevent this noise coming from your power supply, what I'll usually do is I'll put a small disk capacitor as close to the input as possible, as well as a one microfarad electrolytic capacitor. So as you can see, adding that capacitor, uh, definitely made the signal a lot cleaner. Now the square wave is more usable. So if we stop the screen and we zoom in, we can see there's not very much noise now. So it's pretty much fixed. So now I can actually show you what it looks like when I turn the potentiometer on the breadboard. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. see I'm turning it to a higher resistance it makes it blink slower and then turn it to a lower resistance it makes it blink faster. We can actually turn on measurements here and take a look at the duty cycle which is about 50-50 and our frequency is 620 hertz right now as I lower the potentiometer we can see our frequency gets smaller and our duty cycle stays about the same throughout. Well, hope you guys enjoyed that video. Um, if you have any questions, you can let me know in the comment section below. And like always, stay tuned for more content and peace out.